I always knew I wanted to be an astronaut. It was the second thing you learned about me after my name. I'm Pam Melroy and I'm going to be an astronaut. I've always been interested in flying. Little girls in the 60s were not encouraged to play with toy airplanes, but I used to line my dolls up and fly them around like airplanes. I would hold them by the head and fly them around and pretend they were magic, right? That they could fly. And I, I dreamed about that all the time. I always wanted to, to be able to fly up into the clouds. When I look back on it now, though, I think if I'd had the same opportunities that little girls do today, I think I would have realized a lot sooner that I wanted to be a pilot. My father was in the Air Force in the United States. My mom was full-time stay-at-home to take care of the kids. Incredibly smart, though. But the most important thing is they told me my entire life I could do anything I wanted to. When I told them I wanted to be an astronaut after I watched the moon landing, I know a lot of other little girls whose parents said, oh, yeah, sorry, girls can't be astronauts. And my parents just said, okay. Yeah, you can go be an astronaut. All the astronauts when I was a little girl were test pilots, so I decided I was going to do that too. Test pilots are scientists and engineers who do experiments with airplanes. And that's, in a nutshell, what that job is. But you need people with all kinds of science backgrounds. You need medical doctors. You need uh, geologists. So that's the first step. The other thing that I, I tell kids when I talk about it is, you need to just pick something you really love and then go off and be good at it. I definitely experienced the effects of gender imbalance, particularly early in my career. I had a couple of things that helped carry me through. The first one is I had a big goal. I wanted to be an astronaut, and I could not let any of this nonsense get in the way. I'm also pretty stubborn but I would like to see the world change, as I think it has somewhat, but not completely, to a place where you don't have to be super stubborn and you also don't have to have some grand reason to put up with inappropriate behavior. I always have known I have to be better and I am my own harshest critic because I think, well, you know, what are all these people who don't think I have any credibility gonna think if I make a mistake? Um, and that's tough, it can be emotionally tough. Uh, it's been a challenge for me to learn to forgive myself for my mistakes. Every single one of my flights had a moment that felt like that moment where, oh goodness gracious, here we go. We need to draw on our training and our experiences and the teamwork of the crew. And then on my third flight, uh, the biggest one of all, uh, when we went to deploy a solar array, it tore, fully electrified, no way to touch it without electrocuting the suit and all the equipment unless you had insulated tools. So we had to prepare for an emergency spacewalk and get an astronaut out where they shouldn't be to literally stitch up this solar array. Uh, the future of the space station depended on us being successful and it was quite dangerous, actually, very dangerous indeed. But we were successful. When I left the astronaut office, uh, the one thing that I was sure about myself was that I only wanted to work on big things. Big ideas, important projects, problems that really matter. My career since I left the astronaut office has been driven by that, and I've worked in industry, building spacecraft, I've worked uh, in government on both space policy and law, but also developing advanced technologies. We don't have the words to really describe the whole experience in space. It's an experience like no other. There's a physical dimension of floating around in microgravity. It's sort of like my dream with the dolls <laughs> when I was a little girl flying around. You, you, you literally can fly. You're floating everywhere. but. The things that you see, feel, hear in space are different and unique. But most inspiring of all, of course, is to look at the Earth. Uh, the pictures and the video, it's two-dimensional, and we all know the difference between watching something on TV and being there for real. And to see our Earth in three dimensions unroll below you is absolutely magnificent.